87.5% of California is in an extreme drought. In fact, this pool today represents our lakes, streams, and reservoirs. Imagine this pool is Lake Mead. Right now, it's at a deficit the height of the Statue of Liberty. Every year, 25 million Americans rely on Lake Mead for food and for power. And sadly, each year, the lake evaporates six feet. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive right into this drought and see what the reign of terror is going on. I'm Amanda Gray. I'm Sierra Schoenhofen. And welcome, welcome to, to the Harvest Lab. So Amanda, what goes up when rain comes down? Hmm. Oh, men, right, it's Sierra? Rain <laughs> no, umbrellas. Oh, of course. Just like our evaporated water into our water cycle. Ah, but first, if we're gonna understand the drought, we need to first understand the water cycle. In California, the water cycle starts with snow or rain. When it rains or the snow melts, the water is absorbed into the ground or becomes runoff that flows into rivers or streams. The water is either consumed by animals, humans, or plants, or evaporates back into the atmosphere. Thus starting the water cycle all over again. Catch a wave with us over to Santa Margarita Water District, where we'll learn all about how the drought affects the water cycle and what you can do to help out. We caught a wave to the Santa Margarita Water District to learn about the drought and all the things your landscape needs to save water. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, I am here today with Nate Adams of the Santa Margarita Water District. And I have known Nate for close to 13 years now. How's it going, Nate? It's going well, thank you. Good. Now, I'm here to talk about the obvious, the drought. Uh, you know, drought is affecting the United States tremendously right now, particularly the Western United States. And it, it differs in severity by location. Here in Southern California, we've made amazing investments in local water reliability, local water storage, and local supplies like recycled water. And so for right now here in 2021, we're in a good position. That might not be the case in Central and Northern California communities, but the longer the drought goes on, we don't know where we're gonna be. And so we definitely are keeping an eye on the future of where our water supplies are coming from. Can you explain California's water cycle right now? Yeah, right now, the way that California's uh, water system set up and to, to provide water supply, you know, we're very reliant on Northern California to soak up that snow and then release it in the summer. And right now in California, we rely on three to five major storms a year. And when we don't get those storms, we're in a drought. And lately, it seems like we're not getting those storms as frequent and as often, and we're getting drier and drier. And that has a double-edged sword of we don't get the water that year, and it starts to deplete our water storage that we accumulate in wet years. So with all this that's happening and possible wa water shortages in the future, how does recycled water come into play? What's the benefit of that? Yeah, great question. It really is a benefit. In short, it keeps our communities green here in Southern California. There's a tremendous amount of uh, money and investment in recycled water supply because it's local, we can control it, and it's many times cheaper than uh, expensive in, uh, imported water. And what's unique about it is that, like I said, it is drought resistant and it can irrigate parks, so sports fields, uh, the slopes, the streetscapes, and it keeps our communities green even in times of drought. Here in Santa Margarita Water District, about one quarter of our total demand is met with recycled water. And that's significant because that's enough supply. That's about two billions of gallons of water every year that otherwise would free up drinking water for 63,000 people. That's great, and definitely in the landscape industry, the, the recycled water definitely helps us out. Good. What could the community uh, look at when it comes to the drought? W what are the things that they could do to help out? Generally, people are good about trying to water at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. when there's less evaporation. The problem, of course, they don't see when they have what we call unintentional water features, right? So a sprinkler's broken and it runs off and they wake up, they don't see it. The other thing is really grass. I and mean, we're always trying to focus on non-functional grass. What is that non-functional grass? And I've heard it quoted as saying, you know, the only time you step on it is to cut it. Maybe you can let that one go. And, and where that's important, if you think about it, is uh, here in Southern California, we might get 10 inches of rain. The traditional turf grass requires four, four to five times that. 
So you can see that where you start to be judicious about cutting out some of uh, the turf and replacing it with less thirsty, more drought tolerant, more sustainable plants, you can make a really big inroads in, in, in being water efficient. Here in California, we know it's not getting cooler or wetter. We're seeing a shift in homeowners, you know, converting their lawns, converting their landscapes into something that's more sustainable. And that's something that we're trying to showcase here in our Waterworks garden. Um, it's open to the public. So we encourage them to come, take a look, see what might motivate them or stimulate them and, and catch their eye and something they can bring into their landscape. It was great seeing you again. Thank you for the information and thank you for the partnership. Yeah, thanks, Max. I understand that you have a very talented landscape architect. Let's check in with Amanda now. So Amelia, thank you so much for joining me. Not only are you a water efficiency expert, you're also a very talented landscape architect. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and so you had a lot to do with putting this garden together, am I right? Yes, you know, it was an existing district headquarter backyard. Wow, and so yes. what was the purpose behind building this garden? The purpose was really to connect our district customers with the possibilities for their landscape how to uh, take possibly higher traditional, uh, higher water using landscapes and transition them into something that will be more drought resilient for the future. Fantastic, and I know Nate earlier was talking about different types of turf or alternatives. Yes, And yes. there's some great highlights here, so let's, tell me what this is. So what we have here is Carapia, and Carapia is a, a great spreading ground cover. Right now it's being irrigated with drip irrigation, so it's a low water use irrigation system run under the soil of the plant that the plant is planted on. Yes. And it grows pretty quickly, right? It does, and it is self-healing too. You can take uh, cuttings from the outer edge, reseed it into bare spots. Mm -hmm. It really is a very resilient and hardy ground cover. So the Australian finger lime tree, um, which finger is Finger lime? Look yes. at the little pods on here. You can literally see the mini fingers emerging uh, all over the tree. This is an exceptional tree because it's bound to have resistance to the Asian psyllid that Smells is attacking great. a lot of the citrus uh, crops. Each little pod pops open, basically caviar balls of lime juice that are just extremely perfumey. So, oh, and, and is, is this an edible? This is an edible, so you're able to even pop that and squeeze it into your drink. Mm. It's That's very fantastic. Refreshing. <laughs> refreshing. Yes. It's actually really good. Yes, I love it. I come out here at lunch and usually oh have my God, one of these. I love these. <laughs> it is tough as nails. I yeah. mean, it can handle the heat. Um, it can handle the predators because of all these thorns. Sure. They're, it's very resistant to any pests. So Amelia, this is really pretty. What is this plant? This is a coyote mint. So this is a California native, native to a little higher elevation, but does wonderfully uh, in the shade or sun. Mm -hmm. um, we have it here because we do have a lot of rabbits, gophers that enter the garden, graze vigorously, and it has survived those tests. So wow. we're really happy with wow. how this has performed for us. Well, this garden. is a big topic for homeowners, mm -hmm. a plant like this, because bunnies and gophers run rampant on people's properties. So what you're saying is these will survive this little guys. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. And so the garden is open to the public, am I right? Yes, the Waterworks Garden, um, you know, between 8 to 5 is mm -hmm. our business hours. Uh, the parking lot is right off of Antonio Parkway. Yeah. Um, and we can come right in the breezeway and take a look around. Awesome. Well, Amelia, it's been such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. And I love that you make this available for homeowners and homeowners associations to get um, some type of inspiration for their gardens. Thank you so much for everything. Too. Thank you for having me. Uh, Amelia, do you hear something? I do. Sierra, is that you? How on earth did you get down there? Well, we kind of found this swing thing, and this is kind of what happened. Hey, what's up? Uh, nothing much. I just finished my irrigation walk, and I found this. So what is it? I don't know. It says shrink something, and it's kind of scratched off. I, I have no clue. No way, though. I know. It's kind of stupid. It is it? definitely stupid. All right. Let's try it. Okay. And that's how we got to this size. Well, you better be careful down there. I kind of want to see what the landscape looks from this size. Yeah, let's go check it out. Okay. I think we're in someone's yard. <laughs> no, this is a drought tolerant landscape is what we're in. Check it out. That's a candelabra aloe right there. It's huge. I know, it's really cool though. Let's go check something else out. Hey, Sierra, hold this really quick. Okay. Did you know that with drought-tolerant landscapes, you can save up to 80% more water? No way. 
And paired with the smart controller, you can actually save a lot more. That's so cool and it's beautiful. I know. I think I seen a smart controller over there. You want to go check it out? Yeah, but I want you to hold it. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. So what does a smart controller do? A smart controller will help you save water by identifying the type of plant material, the weather, the type of soil, and the sprinkler system. So it's a really great system. Oh, that's cool. So what does this button do? Hey, you just turned on a pressure regulating sprinkler head over there. And what does this button do? I think you just turned on the drip over there too. I think we should go check those out now. All right, sounds good. Uh, here we go again. Oh, I had a great time today. Same here, Santa Margarita Water District was amazing. Thank you, Nate and Amelia for joining us today. And I love seeing the landscape out that close. Oh wait, speaking of which, where's Max? Here. Um, well, I hope you guys had fun today. We're science. Plus fun equals, equals the, the Harvest, Harvest Lab. Lab. Oh no, not again. <laughs>